Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Saturday, February 27th, 2016. Today we're looking at this video called Flight Path of the ISS, or International Space Station, Flat Earth by SAR27. This video was just brought to my attention, and I've only got up to the first three minutes, but hey, there's a whole video even in the first two minutes. So let's take a quick look at what SSAR or SAR27 is saying in the first couple of minutes of his video. Hi everyone, I wanted to take the time to do an ISS video on showing how uh, you can actually do some funny things with your own computer, because supposedly this is a tracker and um, this actually came by my way because I fix computers and a lot of times when you reformat a hard drive and reinstall Windows the BIOS changes the time or something and it's in a different date and I would go in here and check out the live ISS stream and then I would notice something really strange so the idea is nothing really difficult all you gotta do is go to the time and date settings and just click change date now what we're gonna do here is um, we're live but um again back to the date and time we go to February I mean we can go let's go to I don't know September 15th we changed it so you can see automatically that the tracker that is supposed to be tracking the ISS automatically changes. The The thing is that if, re if it really was a tracker, you wouldn't have to do this. You wouldn't be able to do this. Now, you can actually go into the future also. Um, Let's go into 2020 or 2019. Let's go to July 19th or something. I don't know. And there it is. It changes. Now, like I said, anybody can do this. And it's not really hard to do. But if, if you're able to change the tracking system from your computer, it's not really tracking the ISS. So it's kind of just just there for, for entertainment. Now, we can go back you know, 2010, and we can fiddle around with it all day, and there it is, it changes. And don't take my word for it, just go to the ISS stream yourself. I mean, it's right there, I'll put the, post the link in the bottom description. And this happens to all the trackers that the ISS has. I don't want to go into doing a whole bunch. I want to do some more things today with this. So there we have it. Apparently you can change the tracking of the ISS from your own computer by changing the date and time. Um, well, SAR27 is quite correct as far as the tracking is concerned. Um, but what he doesn't understand is that it is not a live tracker like in a James Bond movie where you slap a little box on it and it goes beep 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 and it's tracking the thing across the sky. Um, but what we're looking at here is the system that is used in any astronomy software including the tracking that SAR27 is showing in his video uh, which uses trajectory data not a live tracker um, such as a device or GPS device but trajectory data um, which uses information. Now if I pull up the International Space Station in Starry Night, I can show you exactly how this works. So I've got this paused at the moment, so let me play this, and you can see the International Space Station slowly moving across the sky there. Okay, so I'll just pause that so it's easy to work with. Let me just uh, right click on the ISS, and I'm going down to Edit Orbital Elements. And if I open this up, you'll see a box which is for the um, ISS. And you can see here that we've um, got the, these two boxes here, and it says NASA two line. So you've got style here. You've got different styles that you can choose. So this is the the trajectory data that is used. It's called a TLE, which stands for two line entry. Sometimes it's called a um, two with a number two LE or a, a three with a number three LE. So they're both 
TLEs in the sense that they're two-line entry or three-line entry. The only difference between a two-line entry and a three-line entry is that uh, if you've got three lines, the top line is actually the uh, descriptor, the, the name or description of the satellite, whereas the next two lines, line one and two, are the data for the satellite. Okay, so here we've got on line one, two double five double four, which is actually the satellite identifier number. And then we've got a series of X's. So this information changes depending on the, the position of the satellite. So because the satellites actually do change their orbit slightly, for example, the International Space Station slowly drops down in its orbit and occasionally has to be boosted back to its, its nominal orbit. TLEs have to be updated from time to time. So when I open up Starry Night, occasionally a little box will open up and say, uh, do you want to update your positions for satellites, comets, asteroids, and, and so forth? And that is, is done automatically when I say yes. But I can go online and find a TLE download website. Uh, there is one that I'm a member of, and you can download the, the current TLE, or you can actually go backwards uh, in time if you're wanting to check a position for a satellite or an object on a previous date. So here is a three-line entry. Um, if it's a two-line entry, it's just these two entries here. Okay. So as you can see, it says uh, ISS or Zarya, and there's the 25544 um, for the International Space Station, and then you've got all the data. And if we scroll down, it actually explains to you what all of these numbers mean. Okay, It's quite complicated there. I'm not going to go through it, but I'm going to give you a demonstration using Starry Night of what happens when I update a TLE. So I've already copied a TLE from the website that I use, and I'm just going to hit this button. I could enter them manually, but it's easier to uh, paste the TLE from the clipboard. And you'll notice as soon as I do that that the position of the ISS is going to jump. So let's do that. Watching the position of the ISS, I'm going to paste it in three seconds. Three, two, one, paste. And you see that the ISS has now jumped over there because I've updated the latest TLE for the ISS. And when I go to close out of this box, it's going to ask me if I want to save or not. And I'm going to say, yes, save, because it is the latest TLE, so I may as well save it. And now my position of the ISS is up to date. Now, why would I want to do this? Um, because, for example, um, if I wanted to film the International Space Station crossing over the disk of the Sun or the disk of the Moon, um, which I've done before, I've filmed it crossing over the disk of the Sun twice now, I'm still waiting for the right conditions to film the ISS passing over the disk of the Moon. Last time I tried it, there was just too much cloud. Um, but obviously, you would want to have the position of the ISS accurate and you would want to update your TLEs to make sure that it was going to work when you were going to film and so that you could see what the approach would be and all that sort of thing. Obviously it's not just about filming the ISS crossing over the, the, the disk of the Sun or the Moon, it's, it's about the accurate position of the ISS or any satellite in the sky. So there we have it, um, TLE, two-line element. Um, it's not about a live tracker on the International Space Station. It's not that you can control the, the tracking from your computer, as he says here in his video. You are now an elite hacker of the NASA ISS tracking system. Well, okay, well that's not quite the case, but um, this uh, situation about being able to change the apparent tracking of the ISS is obviously being used in his video as evidence that the ISS is not real and the flat earth has used this to prove that the, the earth is flat and all the rest of it. So once again we see that um, there is disinformation in this video. And if I go right back to the start of his video, he's got this little statement here uh, saying, Earth Research Warning. This is a heavily ridiculed subject. There is large amounts of disinformation on the topic to make it seem silly. If you want to know the truth, pursue this one. The ongoing issue with Earth research. The majority of the population is programmed to say, no, that's impossible, you're stupid, etc., and a bombardment of ad hominems and ridicule. 
instead of plotting the points to compare both models and see which makes more sense. Certainly it is safe to laugh with the crowd, but what if you are wrong? Do you want to know, or do you just want to feel safe? Well, there's some good points in there, SAR27. I mean, I'm all for open and balanced discussion on subjects such as this. This is why I allow open and balanced discussion on my channel. I don't delete comments, I don't block people. Only in the most extreme situations of um, threats of violence or racial um, abuse or things like that will I actually uh, block somebody and delete comments. Spamming is another thing that I will block people for, but I'm, I'm sure that that's quite understandable. People can see that on my com on my channel I allow people to post negative comments and disagree with me. I have no problem with that, so I'm all for discussion. But yes, you make the point, you know, what if you are wrong? Well, in this case, SAR27, I've demonstrated for you the reason why you can change the apparent tracking, and I've demonstrated to you that, that what you have shown us is not evidence that the Earth is flat, okay? So I'm quite happy to have a, a dialogue with you and discuss your claims further. I'm only up to about three minutes in your video. I'm sure that there's a lot more to unpack. But again, what I've, I've found with trying to discuss with flat earthers is, is that when you try and focus on one point and ask them questions about that, they almost always go off on a tangent and say, but what about, and then they'll ask a completely different question instead of answering the question that you're actually discussing. So, you know, any flat earther that is, is happy to have an open and honest discussion without going off on a tangent, I'm all for that discussion. As always, do check out my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. You'll find a link in the description area. Thank you for watching.